Hola, estudiantes de Español 2. Hoy vamos a aprender sobre el imperfecto. Today we are going to learn about imperfecto. Tienen que tomar apuntes. You have to take notes in the PDF attached and that's your activity for today. Vamos a empezar. Let's start. El imperfecto. So what is it? So basically we are going to talk about the past using el imperfecto. So what it means? En español, el pretérito y el imperfecto are used to talk about the past. So basically, remember when we have two verbs to be, cero estar, and we use them in one play, when we talk about permanent and temporary conditions, you know that already. So it means we have two past tenses, and it's basically the same. We use pretérito for some conditions in the past, some events in the past, and we use imperfecto for other events in the past. The pretérito basically is used to talk about completed actions in the past. For example, yo vivía en Colombia. I lived in Colombia. So I use, I lived there. I moved to the United States seven years ago. So I don't live anymore. So the action was completed. And you usually have a time frame. Yo viví en Colombia desde 1977 hasta 2012. I lived in Colombia from 1977 to 2012. So I have a time frame and I know the action happened and it is already finished in the past. El imperfecto is used to then... El imperfecto basically is used for past actions that have no definite beginning, no ending. It is a narration of past events like a video camera recording. The imperfecto is commonly used to tell stories, to talk about your childhood and narration of past events. Okay, so that's what you're going to learn, to narrate past events in the past. And you usually mix up pretérito and imperfecto depending on the situation. So, the uses of imperfecto to talk about the past. To talk about something that used to happen. And again, we don't have a time frame. We are narrating events in the past. So let's take a look at the examples. I used to read a story before sleep. Yo leía un cuento antes de dormir. To speak about how old someone was. He was 30 years old when, again, I'm narrating, I'm using when. Yo tenía 30 años cuando, so I was 30 when something happens. To speak about background events in a story. While I was walking through the forest, cuando iba caminando a través del bosque, so again, I'm narrating things in a story. To say what time it is, it was in the past, I'm sorry, and to talk about the weather. So, it was 8.30 p.m. and it was hot. Eran las 8 de la noche. Era las 8 de la noche y hacía calor. To talk about the past events that don't have definitely started or ending points. When I was a kid, cuando yo era niña, you are going to change niña for niño accordingly, o cuando yo era una chica, cuando yo era un chico, okay? when I was a kid, when I was a child. So those are the main uses. And if you see there is no time frame, I'm not saying from this time, I'm not mentioning the date, I'm not saying 1977, 1980s, or whatever, I'm not mentioning that. Okay, muy bien. There is an acronym that helps you to memorize that, like doctor in place for cero estar. So the acronym is do it, do it, do it. So, one is description. You are describing events in the past. 
when you can change that for used to, things that you used to do in the past. When you use was or were happening. So, I was watching TV. Yo estaba mirando televisión. So, you use that when you start using the was or were in the ing in the past, you use imperfecto. When you talk about the age in imperfecto, when you talk about your feelings in imperfecto, and you talk about the time and the weather. So, that's the acronym to help you to remember this. So, based on the acronym, this is your turn and you are going to say if the imperfecto is used or not. So, if you said it was nine, see or no? I studied last night, see or no? Every day I ate cake, see or no? I used to watch you, Barney, see or no? The princess was ugly. The enemy died. So let's see. See. Why? Because you are talking about time. So you are going to use imperfecto. I studied last night. No. Because last night is a time frame. It is already done. So you are not going to use imperfecto in that situation. Every day I ate cake. It could be. It could be see or no. We're talking about that in detail. In this case, no, because we are saying like every day. I used to watch Barney see. You use imperfecto in that situation. The princess was ugly. See, because you are describing a person or events in the past, the enemy died. No, because that's a complete action. So you cannot change that or something like has a beginning and has an ending. So no. Imperfecto. Now let's talk about the endings, how it changed. So you know that in Spanish, everything is about ending. So we have o, as, a, amos, an in the present tense. Then we have the pretérito, um, e, aste, o, amos, aron, and so forth. And now you are going to learn another set of endings in el imperfecto. Let's talk about the AR endings when regular verbs. So the endings are. Aba, abas, aba, abamos, abais, aban. So how it works? So we have this verb, this new verb, llorar, to cry. And what we do? So we drop the AR. We put the stem. So the stem is your. And we put the new endings. So the new endings, aba, abas, aba. Abamos, aban, abais, and how is it pronounced? So I'm going to say lloraba, llorabas, lloraba, lloraban, llorabais, llorabamos. So the only one that has an accent is the nosotros form. And the rest, aba, aba, and abamos, abais, aban. But if you notice, there is something like, oh, so, aba and aba in yo, el, ella, and usted, they share the same ending. So, how do we know? Well, context. So, we should know that you are talking about yo or el or ella on usted. So, that's why context is so important in Spanish. Ejemplo. Yo siempre jugaba videojuegos con mi hermano. I always played video games with my brother. So I'm narrating things in the past. It's something that I used to do in the past for a long period of time. A veces nosotros peleábamos. Sometimes we used to fight. So basically, again, I'm narrating. 
if I use the past tense, if I said, yo siempre jugué videojuegos con mi hermano, it is kind of weird because I'm not saying the time frame. If I say, yo siempre jugué videojuegos con mi hermano cuando yo era niña, when I was a child. So I have to put kind of a time frame to make the reader or the listener understand what I'm talking about. A veces nosotros eh, peleamos. That's again, that sounds weird in Spanish because you have to say, nosotros peleamos eh, cuando eh, mi abuelo uh, se ponía bravo. He was mad at us. So, for example. So, I just have to give a little bit more context to use the pretérito. So, the imperfecto, I'm just not waiting things in the past. Nobody cares about the time frame. Nobody is asking about um, when these things happen. So, that's the difference. Okay. Take a look of other example of regular uh, AR verbs. So, you kept the stem. That's something that you have to do and add the following endings so we have a black and you are going to keep the stem habla habl, and then put the new stems so yo hablaba tu hablabas él ella usted hablaba nosotros hablábamos vosotros hablabais ellos ellas ustedes hablaban so es muy, muy fácil. It's just endings again. Aba, abas, aba, abamos, abais, aban. Now, forming the imperfecto in ER and IR endings. So, the ER and IR endings are the same. So, good. It's the, the same as pretérito. You don't have to learn more endings. It's the same. So, these are the follows. Ia, ias, ia, iamos, ian, iais. And it has an accent in the A. So, how it works? Let's take a look at an example. Dormir, to sleep. So, we have, we kept the stem, dormir, and we put the new endings. Dormia, dormias. Dormía, dormíamos, dormíais, dormían. And you know dormir is a stem changing verb, right? Say yo duermo. Yo duermo. I sleep. In the present tense. In the present tense. Pretérito, yo dormí. And now, in the imperfecto, yo dormía. I used to sleep. Okay, so new endings and the stem don't change in the imperfecto. So that's good news. You don't have to worry about a stem changing verbs in the imperfecto, just the endings. So let's take a look at the examples. Había una vez, there was upon a time, a princess, hermosa. Hermosa means more than beautiful. So we have three types of beauty, kind of, bonita. That's pretty. Bella is beautiful. And hermosa will be very, very pretty or gorgeous. Que vivía, or lived, or used to live in un palacio grande, in a big palace. So, again, I'm narrating things in the past and it's very common in um, stories or tales. Muy bien. Okay. Now let's take a look of another verb. So you understand this a little bit better. So you kept the stem and you add the endings. So we have vivir. To live. So we have yo vivía. Tu vivías. Ella vivía. We get rid of the IR and we put the new endings. Nosotros vivíamos, vosotros vivías, ellos vivían. Okay. Muy bien. And again, you don't have to worry about the same changing verbs in the imperfecto. 
and they are verbs. An example, the stem, we kept the stem. We have comer, so we kept the stem, com, and then we add the new endings. Yo comía, tú comías, él, ella, usted comía, nosotros comíamos, vosotros comíais, ellos y ellas, ustedes comían. There's no ustedes here, but you know that it goes usted in here and ustedes. Right. Okay. Muy bien. Now, let's work on the imperfecto. So, what it will be? So, we'll go sentence by sentence. So, please take notes. So, yo nunca, I never, hacer la tarea. So, we are going to get rid of the ER and we put the new ending so that it will be yo nunca hacía la tarea. I never did homework. I never used to do homework, which is not true because I already, I always did. But it's just an example. De nosotros regresar a las tres cada día. So we have regresar to come back, to return, usually to a place, home, for example. So we are going to get rid of the AR and we are going to put the new ending and thus regresábamos okay, a las tres cada día so we are narrating events in the past to vivir en una casa azul so basically what we're going to say is you used to live in a blue house or you lived in a blue house and tú vivías en una casa azul mis primas dormir en camas rosadas so, we are going to say, my cousins used to live in pink beds. Mis primas dormían en camas rosadas. Vosotros, vosotros trabajar en un café. You all, in formal, in Spain, used to work in a café. Vosotros trabajabais en un café. Elena, regresar a las 5 every day. So, we're going to say, Elena used to return to 5 every day. So, Elena regresaba a las 5 cada día. Miguel y yo, leer leyendas, leyendas means legends, about monsters. Miguel y yo leíamos leyendas sobre monstruos. Miguel y yo read legends about monsters or used to read legends about monsters. We have a word for used to, but we don't use that very often. So when you use dictionaries and you are going to say, I used to read a lot when I was a child. The translator is going to say used to, and it's going to translate that, solía, but we don't use that. So we use the imperfecto instead. So watch out with the translators and dictionaries because I can tell if you are not conjugating, okay? Muy bien. Only three irregular imperfect verbs. So that's great, that's awesome. So, which are they? Ser, to be, because ser is irregular in all tenses. So, we're going to say era, eras, era, éramos, erais, and eran. So, you have to learn this by heart. Eh, ser and ir and the pretérito are just one, right? Fui, fuiste, fue. Fuimos, fueron, but ser in the imperfecto changes. So again, era, eras, era, éramos, erais, eran. And ir, because ser and ir are irregular in the pretérito, so they are going to be irregular in the imperfecto, but there are only three irregular verbs. 
So yo iba, ibas, iba, ibamos, ibais, iban. For example, yo iba al colegio cuando era pequeña. I went to school when I was a child. And I'm not using the pretérito anymore, again, because I'm narrating events in the past. Very commonly used in español. Y ver, to see. Yo veía, tú veías, él veía, veíamos, veíais y veían. And it is almost the same than the other endings. So those are the only three irregular verbs in the imperfecto. Ok, muy bien. Ejemplos. El guerrero era muy heroico. The warrior was very heroic. I'm describing somebody in the past. I'm narrating his personality, so I'm going to use the imperfecto. I'm not going to use pretérito. Ellas siempre iban al cine y veían una película. They always went to the movies and used to see a movie. Again, I'm narrating events in the past. I'm not saying when, how, I'm just going simple and describing events in the past. Okay, let's do some translation. So we have the heroine was brave. I'm talking about a person like, I don't know, a superhero, but a woman. We used to go to the park. I saw a SpongeBob every day. So how will it be in español? La heroína era valiente. So I'm describing her personality in the past. Heroína era valiente. Brave, valiente. Heroine, heroína. We used to go to the park. Again, I'm not translating used to go, used to, because it is another word and it is nothing to do with that. So I'm just going to translate go. Entonces, nosotros, what? Íbamos al parque. Entonces, go, íbamos al parque. So I'm not going to translate again used to. I'm just going to use go in the imperfecto. Y yo veía SpongeBob todos los días. Well, there is a name for SpongeBob and it's Bob Esponja. <laughs> so it's the opposite. So Bob is the name. Sponge in español is Esponja. So kids will watch that. It's Bob Esponja. But yo veía es Bob Esponja todos los días. Yo veía, why? Because those are the irregular ones. Again, ser, ir, and ver. That's all. Examples. Again, things that used to happen. Cuando iba al colegio, leía todos los días. When I went to school, I used to read every day. Colegio means a school or college in español. So, and usually colegio is a private institution, escuela is public. So colegio, I used to study in a private school, so that's why this is called colegio. So cuando iba al colegio, leía todos los días. When I went to school, I read every day or I used to read every day. To speak about background events, I'm describing the story, I'm describing the scene. So, mientras la directora hablaba, yo escuchaba música en mi iPod. While the principal was talking, remember that the acronym says when you say like was talking, we don't, we don't use that in español. So, we use the imperfect. Cuando la directora hablaba, well, he was talking. I was listening to music in my iPod. So I'm describing two events at the same time. And I'm using was talking, uh, was listening to. 
And instead of that, I'm going to use imperfecto, hablaba y escuchaba. Y to talk about the time and the weather. Eran las 3 de la tarde. It was 3 p.m. Y hacía mucho calor. Sorry, the R is missing here. So, hacía mucho calor. Let's fix that. Questions, you know how to reach me, so please, please ask. Okay, now I'm going to give you more examples about myself. Cuando yo era joven, when I was young, yo jugaba con mis hermanos y primos. So I played with my cousins and brothers, or I used to play. Yo nadaba en la piscina los fines de semana. I used to swim or swim in the pool on the weekends. Yo leía libros de princesas. I read books about princesses. I used to read books. Yo dibujaba mucho. I used to draw a lot. Yo veía al chavo. What is el chavo? El chavo it was a series. And it was very funny at that time. Eh, yo iba a pasear con mi familia. I used to go for a walk or a stroll with my family. Y yo era muy traviesa. Traviesa means like, um, you're not bad, but you're um, kind of like you were silly and you do things that you're not supposed to do all the time. But that's how I was. Entonces yo era muy, muy traviesa. Ok, muy bien. Now, your turn. You're going to write in the PDF three things that you used to do when you were a little. And you're going to start with this expression. Cuando era joven, yo, uno, dos, tres. Ok. Now, in the PDF, you have a list of vocabulary where you are going to write the new words. So, there is a column for words in Espanol, words in English, y un dibujo. Small picture. Entonces, I'm going to write a cuento. What is a cuento? Cuento is a story, story or a fairy tale. And that's the name of my cuento. I made it. La princesa y la bruja malvada. The princess and the evil witch. Había una vez, era así una vez, once upon a time, both made the same, una princesa que vivía en un palacio muy grande. Ella era muy hermosa y estaba enamorada de un príncipe muy guapo. There was upon a time a princess that lived in a palace, a very big palace. She was pretty and she was in love of a princess, handsome or a handsome princess. Okay. La bruja malvada era la enemiga de la princesa. Y ella quería casarse con el príncipe. Ella tenía muchos celos de la princesa. La bruja malvada, the evil witch, was the enemy of the princess. And she wanted to get married with the prince. She was very jealous of the princess. Un día, la bruja mala hizo que los dos reinos se pelearan. Entonces, hubo una batalla. Pero un día, el guerrero más fuerte del ejército de la princesa llegó al castillo de la bruja y la mató. Un día, la bruja mala hizo, she made, that the two kingdoms fought, pelear, to fight. So, in imperfecto. Entonces, 
So, therefore, there was a battle. Pero un día, one day, el guerrero, the warrior, más fuerte, stronger, of the army, ejército, army, of the princess, arrived to the castle of the witch and killed her. Matar, to kill. La guerra terminó y el príncipe y la princesa se casaron y fueron felices para siempre. The war ended, finished, and the príncipe, prince, and princess, they got married, casarse, y fueron felices para siempre. And they were happy forever after. Ok, muy bien. Esa es la historia de hoy. Please, o el cuento. Please um, take, an, take notes in your PDF and uh, turn it in today. Es todo por hoy. Muchas gracias. Adiós.